Hi guys, it's Allie. Man, it's been two weeks. Um, before I go even too far, I'm trying out a headset situation to see if the sound works better. So uh, whoever jumps on here first, if you could uh, give me a little thumbs up for a sound check if that works. Um, and I'm tangled up in a cord. Oh, it's got a little thing. Cool. So, um, hey, Drew, do me a favor. Uh, give me a thumbs up or say something if my sound is working. You're the first person on here. Uh, I was just saying I'm trying a little headset situation. Uh, let me know if the sound is better than it was before. Got a thumbs up. Cool. If for some reason you guys can't. Hey, thanks, everybody. Drew, you have two different colored hands. Um, uh, welcome back. So we skipped last week because it was Labor Day. If anyone did anything fun for Labor Day, shoot us a comment. Uh, I love, uh, I actually have intentions to, in the Facebook group, uh, let everyone kind of talk a little more about their personal lives. Like, where does everyone live? What do you guys do for fun? What do you do for Labor Day? Um, what did I do for Labor Day? Uh, I went paddle boarding on Sunday. And then I went to a friend's barbecue, which turned out to be kind of a late nighter. And then Monday, we were supposed to go to a L.A. rooftop Motown night, which I was super stoked about. But we all had a little too much fun at the barbecue and were exhausted. And my friend's roommates were cooking. So we did nothing and we ate instead. Um, so if you guys did something more fun than I did on Labor Day, let me know. Um, let's see. We got a few people joining us. Hey, Miguel, Bernie. Uh, and Bernie, uh, did you get my Facebook message, messenger message back? Uh, I gave you my email address. Um, I haven't actually checked my messages. And Drew, uh, happy to see you as always. Ian, thanks for joining. Um, I am pulling up, I had taken a couple notes of things to talk to you guys about. So it's been two weeks. And I, for someone who's never liked doing videos, I have to admit, I kind of missed it. There's something about this live thing that's really fun. I think it's the interaction with you guys. I really legitimately want to hear what your questions are. What do you guys want to know? What do you want to learn? Um, there was some cool, I've got the conversations pulled up over here. Um, uh, I also changed up the weekly tips. So if you guys are digging those, throw some more thumbs. And if you have any ideas on things you would like to hear on a regular basis, one note I took, um, I want to see if you guys, uh, and this is kind of early, so some of you guys may not see this until the replay, but leave a comment if you watch this. Um, I was wondering if you guys want to see actual turnkey properties that are for sale. Uh, like I've said quite a few times about different things, I'm trying not to make the group a hipster focus type of thing, but we do have inventories. I had put a uh, thing up, um, a post the other day, because a lot of people are wondering like about recommended providers or specific providers. And I don't know how many of you have looked into Hipster, but that's what we do is we kind of vet these providers. I was actually on a call uh, about an hour ago with a potential new provider in Chicago. Uh, we've had properties available in Chicago for quite some time, but we're always kind of keeping an eye out for new people to work with. And I don't know if it'll work out with this company necessarily. They're pretty new uh, and their property management I'm kind of, I don't know. I have more questions for them. We're going to keep our conversations going. If I decide to think about uh, recommending them. I'm going to go out to Chicago first, see all their stuff. They're totally cool guys. Um, their property management is not vertically integrated and they've actually, uh, it's currently outsourced to a pretty big third party, third, uh, third party property management. I was getting a little tongue tied there. Um, and I have a little, a few hesitations on that, I guess. Um, might not be a deal breaker, but I want to, I want to get some more information. So it was just an initial call, potential new Chicago provider. It is the suburbs. Um, but one thing I told them, and I think we've talked about it in the group is a lot of people have concerns about Chicago and I'm not a Chicago expert. I know that I would love to own in Chicago, but I much past that. I can't speak a whole lot. And there are some, um, interesting dynamics with their property taxes, which can be kind of almost deadly as high as they can be. I think that is a more of a suburb thing, but I don't know if it's like specific suburbs or what it is. Um, it is a more landlord, uh, sorry, ten, um, tenant friendly state. What? I was, boy, it's Monday and it's the Monday after a holiday. So this might get interesting quick. So, but one thing I told them is that if we uh, potentially kind of start working together that I would love to get them in 
on one of these Facebook lives, uh, maybe like zoom everybody in and let them talk about Chicago as a market because they're obviously the experts over me. So I may even, um, if it doesn't work out with them, I may see if I can get some people from Chicago, maybe some of the current providers to do that with us. I am uh, just now kind of figuring out technology. I actually just figured out today how to make my headset work. I got interviewed on a podcast and the guy, um, and usually there's no sound issues on my end, but he needed me to be a little more higher res or whatever, higher res for sound. And so I had this headset and when I first plugged it in, I could not make the thing work. And then some turns out there's a secret button on it. So me and technology are not super clever. I just got my first Facebook page late last year. Like I'm pretty behind the curve, uh, especially considering I was an engineer, which is kind of sad. Um, but what I would like to do for Facebook Lives is maybe start getting some of the experts, whether it's the market experts, maybe some former turnkey buyers, like get people in on, I think if I, uh, I think I can set up Zoom to be on these live things. So that way I could bring people in, uh, which would be super cool. Uh, Bernie, sound is working. Thank you. Drew says it sounds great. Glad my headset little do because it's sure ugly as I'll get out. Um, uh, Monique, yes, I would love that. I'm new. Let me, I actually just, speaking of how bad I am at technology, I just realized that my thing wasn't automatically scrolling. So I was like, oh, nobody's talking. But it turns out you guys are talking. And now, however, I don't know what, which part you would love. <laughs> so leave another message and let me know what you would love. Um, I see the wows and the sads and the angries and the hearts. And is that all from one person? Um, uh, let's see. Drew says, yes, I love seeing the weekly posts from Hipster Facebook page. Thanks, Drew. Um, Eric, I would like that as well. Um, I actually do think, aside from the fact that I was completely missing that all these are coming through anyways, I think there is actually a delay. Um, I, I read about this when I was reading about how to do a Facebook Live. Um, I think there's a delay. So when you guys comment, make sure you specify what you're responding to or unless it's just something really obvious. Uh, Drew, have you bought from all the providers you promote? I could only wish. Um, in the early days, I had. Uh, now, because there's quite a few providers, and I stopped buying turnkeys for the time being, uh, primarily because of this property we bought local last year. I'm on a turnkey slight hiatus, but all of the providers that I work with now, we have worked with several buyers buying from all of them. So there are a lot of people, um, I don't, know how much detail I've gone into about, I mean, you guys kind of know what hipster does. We refer and all this, but there are actually a lot of us in the equation as far as who's vetting these providers, who's um, doing the market research. Like we all kind of play different roles in it. So we actually have kind of a big team behind the scenes. So one of my goals, and I'm actually booked, my calendar's over here. That's why I'm looking over here. Um, I am booked pretty much through October as far as trips. Uh, except for um, September 27th through 29th, I will be in Baltimore, hopefully with some of you guys for the Berkeys. Uh, we'll talk about that more a little later. But I actually really want to start traveling out more. I used to, again, back in the old days, uh, all the providers, I went out, I toured their operations. I really kind of determined for myself, uh, regardless of what people told me, how much I liked everybody. And some of that has gone a little into the back seat as far as priorities, just to other stuff going on. But I actually do want to make it a point to go start visiting these guys. So I have not, but I have people who have. Um, and some of the providers, and um, one of my goals is to, um, like I said, that I've had a pretty big team of us that do this. And I'm kind of starting to vet turnkey providers myself. So I talked to the Chicago provider earlier. Um, Cause in this equation of all these people, I'm not the, I'm not the expert in that department. There's a couple of guys who are way smarter than I am and they know like the driving questions to ask. And over the years I've learned those. Um, and so that's why I'm just kind of now branching off onto my own. And really the, the reason for me doing this outside of this team is that um, there's, there's like the big turnkey providers, which is most of what we've worked with, but there's these little mom and pop shops and all the guys that I work with work on such, um, not bulk. What's, uh, 
like in big scale, like big numbers of buyers, big, like they need big numbers of properties. The Chicago provider that I talked to earlier, they have sold five properties this year. So my team, because they have such a, we to combined have such a big, um, I have no words today, um, uh, pool of buyers they wouldn't even be able to develop that relationship because it's not enough properties because they would sell they would sell them out immediately and their goal is to get to be able to sell two properties a month so the big guns can't do it but it's not to say that i couldn't so that's i'm really kind of trying to reach out and develop some more relationships uh monique would love to have people come in to hear about their particular market um yeah, I agree. I, it took me a second to, I was thinking of investors when you said that, but the turnkey providers themselves, I would love to start getting them in here and really, um, yeah, I actually hadn't really thought about it until we started talking about it. Um, providers to do Facebook lives. Um, cool. Yeah, I would really like, I think that'd be really cool because a lot of times there's so many markets available and I can only tell you so many details about markets. Like I know why I support the market, but when it comes to like neighborhoods and like specific dynamics and like, are you buying South or East of the market? And I don't oftentimes know those answers. So that would be really cool. And I know in my own turn key experience, when I have met, um, hi Steve, hi Doug, uh, did I miss anybody else? Cindy, Eric, hi everybody. Shayla, Luis, El Razon, El, El Razon, did I say it right? Uh, Ian, I think I got you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, we were just kind of talking about different providers, and um, I mentioned earlier, I was just on the call about an hour ago with a potential new Chicago provider. We were just kind of talking about the providers in general and the possibility of getting them in here on Facebook Lives. Grace, I'm excited to see you, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to correct me or somehow type it out to spell. I see your name all the time. Fergus? Fergus? Um, I appreciate all of your comments. Uh, I've really enjoyed you being in the group. I just don't know how to say your name. <laughs> so I hope I didn't botch it up too bad. So everyone who joined, if you guys have questions, uh, I also said earlier, if you also want to share what you did for Labor Day, um, I was supposed to be at a Motown rooftop thing and none of us made it there. So I was kind of bummed about that. But um, yeah, uh, type out your turnkey questions. Um, let's see. I actually had a couple notes. We talked about the providers. Um, oh, one thing I was starting to talk about earlier is aside from bringing providers on is the possibility of showing you guys actual turnkey properties for sale. And I've said it in a couple different arenas, whether it's a post or previous Facebook lives that my hesitation in doing that and just kind of giving you guys everything hipster is that I really do want the group to be, I keep looking over here cause it's up over here. Um, I really do want the group to be not about me or hipster. I want it to be about you guys, about your questions, about you want to about what you want to know I want it to be as unbiased as possible um, but that's why I put the posts up a few days ago saying because a lot of people had mentioned wanting legit uh, referrals and I do have those and like I said I haven't really posted much about them because I don't want it to be a group that is hipster selling hipster but on the flip side to that if anything that we have whether it's blogs um, I am actually gonna start putting blogs out uh, I've got some set up for weekly tips uh, they're gonna come in blog format now um, so some blogs, but we can show you inventories of properties for sale. So if you guys do want that, um, let me know in the comments. Let me, uh, I just realized this thing is not automatically scrolling. Um, and then if you see the replay and you're interested in seeing properties, leave a note in the comments. Because again, I just want to respect you guys and it's not all about us, but happy to show you whatever you want to see. So... And we're actually changing up our website soon. Um, so I think we'll be able to display them a little easier also. Um, let's see, what other notes do I have? For Dees, that actually, that rolls off the tongue a lot easier. Um, thank you. Now, I, when I see your name, I'll, when I say it in my head, I can actually be accurate with it. So um, where are you from? Let us, let us know. Um, and everybody who's on here, let us know where you live. Um, I think we asked this earlier in the Facebook group, like a couple months ago, like when it first started is where is everybody from? 
But I am curious, and I think there was a post, I did a poll about like who's in California versus not, because I know a lot of turnkey buyers are oftentimes in California because it's impossible to buy for cash flow here. So uh, Miguel, nice to see some inventory. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'll make some notes about this if everybody kind of feels the same way. Maybe we do like a property a week, like just to display. And even if it's not like, I mean, it'd be properties for sale, but uh, it would come with the numbers. So like if anyone's trying to learn how to run numbers on turnkeys, um, learn cash flows, learn how to calculate a cap rate, learn cash on cash. Um, maybe what I could do ooh, is put the properties out on Fridays. And that way, if you guys have questions about the properties, you could ask it on Facebook Live on Mondays. So that might actually be kind of cool. I'm going to make a note. Properties on Fridays. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of revisit that. Um, I was about to say, ooh, I'll ever, let's see. Where's everyone from? Westchester, New York. Makes sense. Turn keys for cash flow. Nashville. Ugh. Drew, I think we've talked about this. I love Nashville. I went to, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I graduated undergrad from Middle Tennessee State University, which is in Murfreesboro, which is right outside of Nashville. And I'm from Atlanta, but if I were to move back to the South, I would hands down go back to Nashville. I, I just, everything about that town. I love it. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So Steve, I'm curious from you. Uh, we actually have turnkeys in St. Louis. Uh, I'm curious. I can't remember. I feel like you and I have talked before. Um, but let us know uh, if you've looked at turnkeys there or if you're buying properties in St. Louis local to you. I want to say you and I talked and where you are in St. Louis maybe isn't as friendly for cash flow, but maybe I'm thinking of somebody else I was talking to. But let me know. Uh, Miguel lives in Houston. Man, Houston used to be an amazing turnkey market. Um, right as Atlanta was kind of calming down finally and maybe I think 2012 or so. Let's see. Atlanta didn't calm down for a while, but like after the first round of hustle and bustle was over, I think it was about 2012, we started working with properties in Houston and they were awesome. I was actually about to go buy some turnkeys in Houston, but I accidentally quit my job and lost my W-2. So I suddenly couldn't qualify for financing. So that kind of put a kibosh on that one. But Houston was awesome for a while. Um, but property, I don't even know. I think there may still be a few lingering turnkeys. I know inventory got low, prices went high. But one problem with Texas is, and you probably know this, is property taxes. And I think the insurance is also high. Because um, right after Houston was the big Dallas push. And Dallas was amazing. Dallas had massive appreciation. That I was like 40% appreciation in two years, I think. We had turnkeys then. And all the turnkey buyers there just profited like crazy. It was amazing. Uh, but Texas is really hard right now. Um, so I can see why you might be interested in turnkeys. Um, for Dees, also interested in some sample properties. Cool, thanks. Boston. So one of my closest colleagues of that whole team I was talking about earlier, and he is one of my closest colleagues, not only on the standard turnkeys, but also the Burr plus turnkeys or the Burr keys, lives in Boston also. So Eric, if you're ever interested in making that contact, I'm happy to introduce you. Uh, he would happily go grab a cup of Joe or, let's see, is he a, he's not a bourbon guy. He's a um, I think he's a gin guy. I don't know. Whatever your drink of choice. But yeah, let me know if you're interested in that contact because he's in Boston also. Virginia Beach. Very cool. I, uh, I've i been to Virginia Beach one time and I loved it, but I hear people just constantly love it. Uh, I assume you guys didn't get hit too bad by the hurricane. Just probably some storms. I think it was kind of off the coast by then. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Best pretzels in the country. For these, we're next turnkey trip party is coming to you because you have the best pretzels and I'm totally down for that. Uh, I grew up in Florida, lived in Jersey City, okay, for five years. I was also born in Fort Lauderdale. I was there for a couple of years and then grew up in Atlanta. And after college, I went back to Fort Lauderdale for a very short-lived flying career, uh, but very cool. Brooklyn, New York, uh, from Monique, who lives in Pennsylvania. So we have a lot of Northeastern. I haven't seen one California person yet, which is intriguing. Um, very cool from the Northeast. So you guys all, I don't know standard turnkeys up there, but there's the Burr plus turnkeys, both in Philadelphia and Baltimore. So at least it's kind of driving distance-ish, maybe not ba uh. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not good with the geography up there. Um, Jacob, Alonzo, and Lisa, thanks for joining. Happy to have you. Um, we haven't, you haven't missed a whole lot. 
Uh, we've been just kind of talking about different ideas for the groups. We were talking a little bit about uh, turnkey providers. I was meeting with a new provider earlier on the phone, potential new provider. Um, Miguel, yes, taxes and homeowners fees. Oh, homeowners fees, is that like a statewide thing? Uh, usually that's just kind of like development by development, but I could kind of see that being a um, thing because uh, all the turnkeys, the nice thing about when we were doing it in Texas was they really were really nice um, suburban uh, single family homes. So I could see that a lot of those probably even would come with HOAs. Um, uh, South, uh, we finally got a California. I was like, there's some, there's gotta be California people around here. Uh, South OC, which, uh, part specifically I'll be, well, not in the OC, but I'll be in San Diego for a conference Thursday through Sunday of next week. Um, very cool. Welcome Craig. Glad to have you. Um, so one thing, uh, a quick mention before I forget about it. I'm so proud I brought a list and so I just completely winging everything. Um, if you are interested in the Burr plus turnkey model in any way or you want more information about it, uh, make sure you are subscribed to Hipster's newsletter. I'll probably put some stuff on the group too, but we're going to blast some information out tomorrow. We finally got some stuff put together. We got a video from the developer himself, which is actually really cool. So that'll all be coming out tomorrow. Uh, there is a post from a couple days ago with our subscribe link, but or you can just go to hipsterinvestments.com. I'm like, I think the subscribe, there's an option to subscribe on the top. We're actually about to just, we're about to change up the website a little bit. That's why I was thinking about it. Um, but if you are interested in Burr plus Turnkeys or the Burr plus Turnkey trip later this month, September 27th through 29th, uh, make sure you're subscribed or reach out. I can send you the info. And like I said, I'll put some stuff on the group. Um, so uh, our Texas Turnkeys don't have an HOA. Which city are those in, Drew? Um, Laguna, Ni no, I can never say it, Nigel, Nigel. Um, I, beautiful area. Anything in the OC with the word Laguna in it is beautiful. So right on. I actually may go paddle boarding. Do I go to Laguna? No, I go to Newport. Just kidding. Um, for Deese, um, shoot me an email, ali, A-L-I, at hipsterinvestments.com, um, or be subscribed to the Hipster website. And when the email comes out tomorrow, you can just hit reply to that, and uh, we can talk there, but I can send you some info. Super cool. Um, so one thing, uh, so if you guys have any turnkey questions, start them coming. I don't know why my thing's not auto-scrolling, so if I don't see it for a second. Uh, Lubbock, Te oh, we did talk about this. Lubbock, Texas, uh, my dad is from Clovis, and you basically have to go through Lubbock to get to Clovis. And uh, my family, my grandfather, my dad and mom, and my dad's sister, they all owned a hotel. My grandfather bought it in Lubbock. It was right next to the hospital. Uh, it was the guest um, the guest house suites, guest house inn, guest house inn maybe. So uh, they sold it. I don't know if it still has the same name, but um, yeah, I spent a good bit of time in Lubbock. So whatever turnkey questions you guys have, start shooting them over. And in the meantime, I wanted to, I thought a cool topic really quick. There was a post from, uh oh, I lost it. Um, there was a post from Donaldson about can you house hack a turnkey two to four unit property? And I actually thought this was going to be, um, this was kind of a good um, miniature discussion, uh, not specifically about house hacking, but um, the difference. But so actually, there's a couple different factors in this. So one thing to know is that when you buy a turnkey, you can do whatever you want with it. You can live in it, you can rent it out, you can keep it vacant, it, you can house hack it, you can Airbnb it, it does not matter. Turnkey is only a way of buying a property or a rental property. So once you own the property, you own it. Like you're in charge, you're the boss. If you don't like the property managers, you can fire them. Like you are the boss and nobody else is. And I'm getting a little caught up in my cord here. Let's see if we can use this little shirt uh, thing here. Um, so you own the property. So the answer to that question, whether you can house hack a turnkey two to four unit is yes, you can do whatever you want with a turnkey once you own it. But the cool kind of conversation I thought uh, might be worth mentioning on here is this was one thing that kind of I had to learn when I got into real estate is that there's a difference between, I don't know what the official term would be, like a difference in investing for, um, 
vacation properties and strictly investment properties. And somewhere in this mix would also be the category of things like house hacking, uh, Airbnb for short-term rentals or whatever short-term rental, um, living in your turnkey. Um, you can do anything you want with a turnkey, but when you start combining, and I don't even know if I'm gonna word this correctly, when you start combining your goals, you kind of start getting tripped up. So my response to this, can you house hack a turnkey two to four property? Yes, you can do whatever you want. But typically the odds of a turnkey property from a turnkey provider or any of them that are cash flowing for that matter, being somewhere you want to live is probably pretty slim. Not only just from the city standpoint, like what city do you want to live in? Like if you happen to live in Kansas City and you happen to live where it cash flows and you happen to whatever, then yeah, it could work. But the odds of that happening are probably pretty small. So for that question in particular, again, I keep looking over here because I have it all pulled up over here, is um, yes, but what are the odds that you're going to want to live in that property? So not only is it the city specifically, but like the neighborhood, like my turnkeys uh, in Atlanta, I love them and they are all in, there's some in nicer areas than others. There's none that I totally wouldn't live in just from like a safety or commute standpoint, but I wouldn't want to live in any of those neighborhoods for me personally, because I like different kinds of things. I like to be closer to uh, more, I was about to say hip areas, it sounds so nerdy, um, hip areas, places where there's things to do, um, different kind of crowds. Um, so as much as I trust all the areas that my turnkeys are in, I would not want to live in one. So if you can find a property that you would want to live in and house hack it, that's cool because the nice thing about turnkey is it's probably, um, I don't want to say guaranteed cash flow because no cash flow is guaranteed, but it is scheduled to cash flow. So unlike most places you would house hack, you're probably not going to, it's, they're going to be a lot lower on cash flow. So like if I were to house hack here in LA, I'm going to be losing more a month than I would to rent my apartment that I live in. So then going to kind of back to what I was saying is like, a lot of people say, well, I would really like to invest in a turnkey somewhere that I would want a vacation to or um, somewhere I would want to go. Well, let's say that you really like to travel to Miami. Well, cool, but your only options in Miami, you're going to be like condos or whatever kind of place, but there's probably not a lot of cash flow. And essentially when you're doing that, you're trying to mix two different strategies. You're mixing investing for cash flow with vacation I don't know if it's called vacation rental investing or like if you just want somewhere that you personally can go. Um, so vacation something or vacationable areas is what we'll call them. Um, you're mixing strategies because in order to, let's say you want to go to Miami a lot. I just have Miami on the brain because we were talking about it earlier. Let's say you want to go to Miami a lot. So you're like, hey, instead of me paying for a hotel or whatever, I stay in when I go to Miami or Airbnb or whatever, I could buy an investment property in Miami. And then when I go there, I could stay in that property. Sound logic, but you got to break down the numbers. So what are the expenses and what are the numbers on the investment property versus what you would spend on an Airbnb for a week or a hotel for a week. And when you look at it that way, it's like, oh, like there's something psychological that says, oh yeah, that I'd save a lot of money and that'd be a lot more worth my time because I'm not wasting money on a hotel. Well, maybe not, but if you're also not cash flowing on this property and it's, you buy it more peak times or whatever, are you spending more to own the investment property than you would on this hotel or whatever you would stay in. So it's something you want to think about is, so again, the different strategies in this kind of, um, these are unofficial strategies, buying somewhere that you would want a vacation to, buying somewhere you would want to live, uh, buying something, I think this actually came up in a post too, buying something to Airbnb it. I think somebody had asked, was it in the group? Um, if you can Airbnb uh, or buy a turnkey to Airbnb it. Yes, you can, because you can do whatever you want with it. But in my experience, I've never seen a turnkey offered in a high demand Airbnb place. Um, it might be more like suburban or like, usually if someone's going to Airbnb something, it's in some kind of epicenter of the things they're going to do or at a beach or like the focal point of why they're traveling there in the first place is nearby. 
And turnkeys are not usually in those places because those places are probably the non cash flowing areas, like cool parts of downtown, whatever it might be. Um, so, hi, David. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so it, you're really, I feel like if you're going to make an investment, you need to pick a goal. And it's like, pick a vacation place, or I think uh, it also came up in a post, like I think there is, is it Turnkey, um, there's an investment company now, Turnkey Vacation Rentals, I think, it actually kind of messed us up for our turnkey name, because it con was confusing, but you buy these properties with the specific intention of making them vacation rentals, I think it's usually condos, and everything's managed for you, or something, um, but vacation rentals should be a strategy all their own because those properties are in very different places than other strategies. Airbnb in short term, great, cool. Make sure it's somewhere that you could also get a long term renter in case anything weird happens. Like uh, West Side LA just vetoed Airbnb in short term. So you want to make sure you could also have long term tenants there and it would make sense on the number standpoint. But those properties are also going to be different. They're going to be more closely related to like vacation rentals. They're not so much where the turnkeys are. Um, where you want to live, again, the odds of a turnkey being exactly where you want to live, I can't imagine that being the case because if it were, then you could just buy locally and buy non-turnkey and save a lot of money anyways. But then there's also the debate about um, like let's say you did buy a turnkey and house hack it. How much, let's see, how can I word this? What would the numbers look on like on that situation versus living elsewhere and collecting the full cash flow on it? So like I said, in Los Angeles, it's cheaper for me from an expense perspective to rent where I live versus buy somewhere, even if I were to house hack it or even if it was my primary home or whatever. Um, so run those numbers. But my whole point of this is I thought it was actually kind of a cool opportunity to really let you guys know that there all of those strategies are different. Like you're still talking rental properties, you're still talking property management, you're still talking all the same things, but what it creates is a difference in where you wanna buy these things and what your numbers may look like or what numbers you should shoot for. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's helpful for anyone. Um, ask any questions if you want to about that, but I hope it made sense. I hope I didn't wasn't totally, um, uh, wild with my words. My words aren't working well today. So um, let's see, what do we have going? So Eric, in general, what is a tenant situation like when buying a turnkey? Is a credit check done? Do they have a lease in place? Fantastic questions. So yes is the answer to that. So what's going to happen before you buy a turnkey? And we're talking the standard turnkeys or actually even the bird turnkeys also. Um, but when you go to buy a turnkey, you're there are some cases where people buy them without tenants already placed. Maybe the seller has convinced them to do so. I don't personally recommend it. I like to wait till the tenants are there. But assuming tenants are in the property, you during your due diligence period have every right to ask for all their documentation. You can look at their lease. Uh, the property management company can give that to you, a copy of their lease, a copy of their credit scores, their background checks, whatever documentation, because that really is part of something that you need to check yourself is that you don't want to buy this property with completely unqualified tenants unless you just want to prepare for an early eviction or whatever might happen. But that is part of the turnkey deal is that you're getting a fully rehabbed property with paying tenants. And so those tenants are part of that verification. So you wanna verify everything you're getting with this property. You wanna verify it's as advertised. And part of that is making sure as best you can that that income is gonna keep coming in, which depends a lot on those tenants. So yes, um, if for some reason there was not a lease in place or a credit check hadn't been done, I'd be really leery about the property management company because hello but yeah I would absolutely ask for all of those um, all the qualifications that they use to decide that this tenant would be good and that you like the sound of the tenant for sure um, the tenant situation in general when buying a turnkey um, nothing super crazy about it. like I said they're probably already gonna be in the property which is nice because that's the whole idea is that you're cash flowing from day one if for some reason you're convinced that you should buy a turnkey before the tenants place which like I said has happened make sure that you're in touch with the property management because you have the opportunity at that point to approve or not approve somebody that they want to approve so you have a little bit more say in the equation um, but unless there's some really 
valid or legit reason, I would not close on a turnkey until the, the until the tenants are in. Occasionally, some providers over the years, because the reason that they are sometimes motivated to sell it to you before the tenants are in is because they have holding costs. They can't keep going with their business model while they're holding your property. It's their money. It's their, it's the wait time, the hold time. So they want to get it sold to you because when they recoup those funds, they can go do another property. And sometimes it's happened over the years where they want to offload the property. And so they'll offer a like 120 day rent guarantee or something. And so they say, well, tenants aren't in it now, but uh, we'll pay you the full amount of rent. Uh, regardless for 120 days there's nothing technically wrong with it and but like I don't know if the, if that's an option certainly don't take it without a rent guarantee because the whole again the whole purpose of buying a turnkey is to have cash flow on day one uh, but if they offer a rent guarantee I don't know shoot me an email and tell me why they don't have tenants in yet because what you don't want to do because you lose a little bit of the ability to verify the quality of tenants that this property can bring in because what if 120 days goes by and nobody really wants to rent the property so you don't really have confirmation on the rentability um, who could rent it for who you could rent it to if they're able to pay the advertised amount and just because there's tenants in before doesn't necessarily guarantee all of these things either, but at least there's some kind of hint that everything could come through as advertised. So I don't know if, if you are tempted, if a seller's trying to sell you a property before tenants are in, shoot me an email and just run it by me and I'll, I'll tell you my opinion. <laughs> like, I don't know. And I guess it depends on the provider too, but for them otherwise like tenants are about the same with turnkeys as any real property some uh turnkeys focus more on section eight places so that is something that you would want to run by the provider and or the property management company is find out every state has different section eight rules and i think it may even be different i don't know if it's county to county or like i'm not sure what all the rules are but really have that discussion like because some people just aren't comfortable with section 8 and they don't want to deal with it and it's really unique in certain uh, markets where I think this used to be the case with some of the properties we used to work with in Chicago we're not necessarily working with these properties but it was actually better and more advantageous for the investor to do section 8 and I can't remember all the logistics of why that was but um, I'd say that's but that it's kind of true with any property you buy, not just turnkeys, but I would make sure you know, like, are these properties focused on Section 8 or are they not? Or, and if they are focused on Section 8, like, what does that entail? Like, what are, um, what are any, um, contingency is not the right word, consequences of that. Like, is any part of your life going to be harder, whether it's Section 8 inspections or whatever it might be? So that would be a conversation I would say to have. Um, let's see. Dan, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, Monique, are there any turnkey properties in Atlanta? So there used to be a lot. Um, I actually don't, I'm sure that some of the turnkey companies there are still up and running. I don't know of any directly because I don't do anything in Atlanta anymore. The When I was buying in Atlanta, the um, the best turnkey provider that I know and I actually bought properties from, like the high, nicest properties, the nicest rehabs, the whole kit and caboodle, the guy was an absolute terror to work with. I mean, if you wanted to feel bad about yourself, talk to this guy because he's going to make you feel bad about yourself. Like he just, we actually had to ban him from emailing with any of our clients because he had such a great product and I've said this before, turnkey providers are really good at what they do. Uh, finding distressed properties, negotiating deals, rehabbing, all the technical work. With a couple of exceptions, like Memphis Invest is known for customer service, but with them and maybe a couple other exceptions, turnkey providers are not known for customer service. But this guy was, and he's a great guy. I've gone out, I've had drinks with him, we've had dinner, I've hung out with him several times. This was years ago. But as far as buying with him, like especially if you're a brand new investor, like, oh, we would just like, we would just sit there like, oh, please don't talk, please don't talk, please don't talk. It was so bad. Um, so when the prices in Atlanta skyrocketed, is kind of what they did, and the returns became very minimal, and at that point, most, a lot of the turnkey providers at that time had gone out of business because there was such a rush to Atlanta, everyone and their moms became turnkey providers, so they were kind of short-lived companies, like they didn't know how to sustain, and I, some of, I bought properties from some of those people, and 
the properties are fine, but you know, when they grew too big for their own shoes, they kind of went out. So the main one left with the best product was this guy's company. And I was like, Oh, between the prices being high and the returns being low and him just being an absolute terror. We, we really just kind of pulled out of Atlanta, but now I don't even know if he's still up and running in Atlanta. So the answer to your question is, I'm pretty sure there are probably still turnkeys in Atlanta, but I don't know of any of them personally. Um, and I don't have connections with them uh, currently either. Um, David, sorry I'm late. Never a worry. I'm glad you're here, period. A lot of people never make it on and just watch the replay. So you're already ahead of the game. Um, I have a question regarding property appreciation. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this won't be good. Um, I say that only because prices are so high right now. Appreciation is kind of like a, and sadly, it's kind of a unicorn at this point. But do you consider appreciation in your calculation or do you just assume zero appreciation in your analysis? I love that question and I go with the latter. I don't include it in my analysis because um, there's so many things that can go wrong in, with an analysis anyways, not the analysis in particular, but analysis is really just a projection. So when, so, let me back up for a second. Just for anyone who's watching who's not familiar with this, when you own a rental property, there's actually five different streams of income that come from a rental property. Number one is cash flow. That's what we're almost all familiar with. Uh, that's what cap rates are run off of. That's what cash on cash is run off of. Those are all cash flow calculations. Cash flow being the money that you pocket every month. Hopefully you pocket it versus taking it out of your pocket. Cash flow is one income stream. The second one is appreciation, which we all know also when the value of your property increases. Um, there are the tax benefits. Uh, essentially, the income on rental properties ends up more or less being tax-free as far as income tax because of all the write-offs and especially the, the depreciation write-off. So I know when I first started buying rental properties, I still had a W-2 paycheck and my returns got higher. I was like, wait, am I actually making money from my rental properties on taxes? Like my refunds were higher all of a sudden. Like I, I had so many write-offs with the depreciation, I was making money. So that's another income stream. And even if you're not making direct money, you're saving the tax money on it, which is 33% or whatever percent. Um, paying down uh, equity build via, um, boy, I got tongue tied. I need coffee or something. Um, you are building equity in your property via the mortgage pay down. So your tenants are paying down your mortgage, which is building your equity and that's all your money. So that's another um, income stream. I was about to say indirect income stream. It's pretty direct, but it's not necessarily liquid, but it is in the value of the property. <coughs> Excuse me. I got so tongue tied, I choked myself up. And then the other one, which is very indirect, is the hedge against inflation. So the rental properties have five different income streams. So the reason I say this is that I've had to go through this on my properties. Like I had a property one time that for some freak of nature, is actually one of the nicest properties I own, some freak of nature, it was vacant for 10 months, like 10. First of all, I had a really bad property manager. It came from this guy in Atlanta that gave everybody headaches. And... So I was super stressed about it. I was like, oh my God, I was like, I'm paying a mortgage on it. Like I'm losing all this money on this property. And one of my mentors kind of sat me down and said, totally hear you. Cash flow is stressful, but look at these other four profit streams. And the property at that point had doubled in value. It's probably, since, I think it's since tripled in value. I had made refunds. I had gotten refunds from taxes. My mortgage is getting paid down. And so when I looked at all those things, it was actually a profitable property. And I was like, even without the cash flow, it was hard to pay this mortgage every month, but it was actually still a profitable property. And so the whole point of it was that when you have five different income streams, you have a little bedroom on one of those streams not working for a minute and the other four can kind of sustain you. So while I didn't have cash flow coming in, I had the other things working for me. So the reason I say that is that when I run the numbers, on turnkeys, and this doesn't work, I mean, it works, but for a negative uh, cash flow property like this property we bought last year out here, um, because turnkeys cash flow, I run all my numbers just off of that for the reason of it being more conservative. First of all, I don't know that the appreciation is gonna happen. Second, even if it does, who am I to guess how much it's gonna be? Everyone's like, oh, 3% a year. 
Is it? I don't know. And so I really look at it as I run all of my numbers off the cash flow and I consider cash flow to be king on the turnquoise, turn, turn the turnkeys. So especially in a market like where we are now, prices are high. So cash flow is that important. And so then I consider appreciation to be strictly a bonus. Like um, I really, it, it just, um, it bothers me to my core when I see people trying to push properties using this big appreciation spreadsheet and I love a good spreadsheet, but this big spreadsheet with these like predictions of 3% a year and then compounding whatever. And the that I was like, that seems like sales crap to me. Like, I mean, yes, it may be true. Absolutely. It could be, we don't know. And it could even be better than that, but to try and sell a property based on that. So, uh, no is the answer to your question. Um, I assume zero appreciation in case that happens to be what happens. Um, if the value on my property goes down to below what I paid for it, that doesn't matter unless I'm trying to sell or refinance the property. So I'm not worried about a negative value, but if that higher value doesn't happen, I don't want to have bought this property hoping it would happen. So um, I hope that answers your question. And if uh, it doesn't, or you have any other follow-up questions, just shoot them on over. Crystal, hello, uh, and Julian, uh, long, I was about to, are you, can I call you guys long-termers, long-term groupies? Um, you both have been around and uh, commenting, and I love both of you guys being in there. Um, Steve, I explored your St. Louis properties and got a little confused. Uh-oh, because I hope I can clarify. You refer to Maverick, who then refers to something called America's Housing Alliance, who also sells in multiple markets. Never figured out who would manage it, but it seemed I would be the I would be the closest local contact. Can you clarify this arrangement? Oh, because you are in um, St. Louis. Um, Remind me too that I I do think we've talked before, but remind me why you're interested in turnkeys because you live in St. Louis. I'm almost certain you told me um, that you live in a part of St. Louis that doesn't cash flow. Um, and the only reason I ask that is, um, boy, the lighting in here got pretty raunchy, didn't it? Um, I finally fixed my sound and then I turned into this like um, like alien craft Note to self, the the day the daylight is changing, so I'll <laughs> there's a window over there. Um, uh, I just looked at the screen. I was like, where did I go? Um, so I am curious what your motive for turnkeys is, just because uh, turnkeys do come. I don't want to say at a premium, but they are more at market value. And probably if you bought a house next door to you, wherever anybody lives, and it's in turnkey condition, you'd probably pay market value as well. But if there was a uh, property near you that was a little slightly distressed, even if just to cosmetic levels, um, I'd be curious if you're just not interested in doing that, which I wouldn't blame you because I wouldn't be interested in that either. But I'm curious uh, if you're in St. Louis, why uh, turnkeys? So uh, uh, let's see, Crystal, continue my education. I'm coming back to your question, Steve. Uh, Drew, we're Allie's groupies now. I don't know. Do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm like, wait, not my groupies, just the turnkey groupies. We're all one. It's something like that. I don't know. Um, Steve, I'm an hour away. Have turnkeys in Kansas City and Ohio. Ohio. Okay, cool. Um, oh, that, that gives me more questions for you. Um, so going back to your question, the short answer is that all of the turnkeys come with property management uh, in place. So the different turnkey providers come with uh, the, the management may either be vertically integrated, meaning it's part of the turnkey company, or it may be a third party that the turnkey uh, provider is contracted to. So all of the investors and properties go to that property management company, like they make it a bulk package versus if it's in-house and uh, that actually, if we don't get another question coming in, I'll kind of get back to that because it's actually something I was talking to the Chicago providers earlier about uh, the pros and cons about vertically integrated property management versus third party property management. A lot of people say, well, I really want to work with a property manager or um, turnkey provider where their property management is vertically integrated. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there are some pros to it, but I there's to me, equal pros and cons to both scenarios. So that might be a good conversation. Um, so the short answer is yes, uh, I apologize. It can be a little confusing of who is who in the equation, but when you buy a turnkey property, it does come with property management, but you being local, 
that would be an option for you. This is not uh, something I've really even talked to someone about because most people I talk to who are buying turnkeys are not local to where they're buying them. So if you did buy the St. Louis, a St. Louis property, you 100% could be your own property manager or you could be the landlord. Like there's nothing wrong with that at all. So, um, you know, it might even work. Um, and I'm just coming up with ideas unsolicited. I don't even know necessarily what your goals are or whatever. But another thing for you, because you are local, is you might be able to talk to them. Not to say that you could get a discount on the property, but I almost wonder if you could piecemeal out some of the equation a little more. Like, let's say that, um, uh, I know if it were me, like one thing I'm not interested in is finding distressed properties, um, mostly because I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for. I'm also not interested in rehabbing because I'm not good at it. Like you should see me try and be handy about anything. It's not pretty. Um, so like if I live local to turnkeys, it might be a conversation that I would have with them and say, hey, you know, I can do everything else, but can you identify a property for me and rehab it? Like I pay you, you know, that like that chunk of, and I mean, maybe that's the whole cost. I don't know. The property management margins for the companies are very small. Um, like that's not where they make their money. So it may not change the price of the property necessarily, but that would be an open conversation you could have with them as let's like say, Hey, I'm local. I just don't really want to do this stuff necessarily myself. Um, I don't know. So that'd be something. So I don't know if I, I hope I answered your question, but no worries. Um, the players can be very confusing, but it does come with property management. Absolutely. Unless you just don't want the property management. Um, Carl, howdy, been flying lately. Um, uh, what did I just see a post of you from? Were you fishing or flying or something? Um, I can't remember. You're doing something cool on your Facebook. Um, so since we don't have another question, I do want to get to, uh, I'm going to go back to this property management thing just because it's kind of a good topic to talk about. Um, when you buy a turnkey, uh, the turnkey company themselves, they are, as we all know, they find the distressed properties, they rehab it, they put tenants, and they offer property management. So the day you close, there is management ready for you and your property. The two ways that that happens is it can be a vertically integrated property management company or property manager, meaning let's say that, um, uh, I was going to try and come up with a clever name, Alley Turnkeys LLC. I'm the turnkey provider and the property management that comes with the properties that I sell you, this is such a bad example because then it may be confusing for anyone not familiar with me and I'm not the turnkey provider. But let's back up and not make this creative. There's a turnkey provider. They're going to offer a property management solution. The first option for that is they may have vertically integrated property managers. I'm like, I can hear me in my head. Like, <laughs> I'm like, can we get to the point here? Um, I don't, I really don't think I had enough coffee this morning. The vertically integrated means it's part of their company. So it's under the same company name. It's like employees of the same company that the turnkey provider is. So the turnkey provider literally provides you everything, including people to be your property managers. That's what they mean when they say vertically integrated into the company. The other option is that while turnkey providers are really good at finding distressed properties, negotiating, doing rehabs, all that kind of stuff, maybe they aren't as good at property management or they don't have the bandwidth to deal with that side of things because it really is a whole different skill set. Like I say it all the time, the turnkey providers are really good at what they do. It's the technical stuff. It's the rehabbing, finding the properties, knowing where to buy, knowing all this stuff. But property management is much more of a people skill, relationships, communication, uh, it's huge for communication. And that's very different than everything else turnkey providers do. So they sometimes will not stress or try to integrate the property management into their company, but instead they'll make a deal or sign a contract with another property man, someone who's in property management, and I keep trying to get creative with this in my head and as analogies and examples, but it's not working. Um, and they'll say, hey, you know, we sell a lot of properties to investors. We would like to be exclusive with you guys. So everyone who buys through us, they go straight to you. Like you take on the management of these properties and the incentive for those management companies, number one, they get a steady stream of clients, easy. 
Number two, they kind of will at that point have an idea of what they're going to be stuck working with because property managers, like if you have a really bad property, it's your property manager who's going to be stuck with that. They're going to be stuck with bad tenants, potentially bad tenants. They're going to be stuck with the tenants, stuck with the neighborhood, stuck with anything that may be less than desirable to say it for that. So if they know the turnkey provider does a certain quality of property only in certain areas, they attract certain quality of tenants, whatever it might be, that kind of makes their life easier because it's not a total crapshoot. So that's why they might sign on to it. And with for the turnkey provider, it's an advantage for them to not have to deal with that entire component of skills that they probably have no interest in anyways. So when people ask about, um, yeah, I've, I've heard it over the years for sure. And I'm trying to think back of if there was a, another, if there was a period in time where there was a d direct, um, negative to working with third party managers. And I, it seems like there was, cause I remember there kind of being a big push for everybody wanted a property management company vertically integrated into the turnkey provider. And to this day, some people still say, well, I only want to work with turnkey providers that come with the property management integrated. I don't want a third party manager. I personally don't understand that. Um, requirement, if you will, there's pros and cons to both. So in my opinion, the vertically integrated ones, the advantages is, is that those property managers are pretty motivated to perform well because it's part of the package, like they're part of the same package. And so with turnkey buyers and real estate investors in general, uh, they tend to be repeat buyers. Like I mean, a lot of people will only buy one property, but if people have the funds, they want more than one property. Well, if you buy this property and the property management is terrible, you're probably not going to go back to that provider. So I think there's a really good incentive for the vertically integrated property managers to perform as best as they can. The downside, and this is all my opinion, I somebody may have different opinions about it. The downside to the vertically integrated property management is like I said, that is not their best skill set. The turnkey providers are good at technical stuff. They're not usually very good at relationship based things, which includes communication, which is my pet peeve across the board in real estate. Well, actually kind of life. Like if you communicate well with me, you can probably sell me on anything you want to like, but if our communication is broken, I, I start stressing. And in my experience with turnkeys and property managers, both the minute the communication dissipates, bad things are coming around the corner and I end up having to hire a new property manager. Obviously I'm speaking from experience on that one, but going back to this, because they're such technical brains, which makes them so good at what they do, customer service and communication is not, how many people have worked with a handyman? How, how many handymen have you ever met? Again, there's exceptions to every rule. They're not typically good at communication either because they're so daggum good at fixing your house. Like they're technical people, not so much either business or customer relationship type of people. It's just it, handymen are notoriously unorganized and they notoriously won't call you back. Like I, again, <laughs> it's like, Oh, apparently I, I've been a little fresher with my handyman so I can hear myself. Um, but every person has a different skill set and turnkey providers are more technical. So I think the downside to the vertically integrated uh, property management, while the incentive is higher, which is kind of the advantage, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're still going to be the best property managers. Like, of course, they can hire people in that are really good at that skill set. But I don't know. I think there's just a lot more room for it to not flow super easy. Now switching over to the third party, the downside being that in theory, and I don't know how true this would be, in theory they may not have as much incentive because they're their own company and they can they may be self-sustaining without the business of the turnkey company properties. But I think the upside too is that they are, if they're in property management, hopefully, they already have all the customer service and relationship and communication stuff figured out. Like that's more of their niche. So in my book, vertically integrated property management versus third party property management from the turnkey company, I'm split 50-50 on it. I don't really have a preference. All I care about is whether the property management is good or not. Uh, one of the Chicago uh, turnkey providers that we were working with 
up until recently, and the only reason we're not working with them as much now is because most of their properties are in the suburbs and the suburbs that are having the massive tax hikes. Like it's actually um, really kind of starting to hinder people's numbers. So we've kind of had to go a little bit back to more urban stuff in Chicago. But that property management company, they have only had four evictions in 15 years. And the minute I heard that, I almost could have cared less what the deals were. I was sending everybody to them. Like I have friends that are like, well, I want to buy my first turnkey. I'm like, ooh, I want it to be the best experience possible. I was like, you got to go to these guys. I, I didn't, to this day, I don't even know if they're vertically integrated or third party. I don't care. But four evictions in 15 years speaks loads to their tenant screening, to their ability. And this is in a tenant friendly state of Illinois. So, when you have a tenant friendly state, a really, really good property manager is going to have tricks up their sleeve about how to get rid of bad tenants without having to go through the eviction process. Maybe it's they offer them something, maybe may, that might not be accurate, but they have little tricks. And so four evictions in 15 years is fantastic. And so I wanted everyone to go there. Again, could care less if it's third party or uh, vertically integrated. So, um, yeah, let me hop on. So it's six o'clock. So I'm going to take these last two questions. And if any more come in, we'll save them for the next one. Um, I super appreciate you guys being here. Um, the replay will be up. And if you missed it earlier on, if you are interested in the Burr Plus Turnkeys, I'm still waiting on someone to change that acronym. Make sure you're subscribed to Hipster's website. We're going to be blasting stuff out tomorrow. And I'll put some stuff on the group too. Uh, Crystal, I live in California and it's so expensive here. Hear that. Uh, I feel like out of state is a lot more affordable to start investing. Do you think it's going to be more difficult starting out in a different state you live? I think the answer to that is 100% dependent on how you do it. So if you think of like the spectrum of ways that you could invest out of state, let's say on the easiest end, let's say you go with a turnkey. So all of the hard stuff is taken care of for you. You have experts doing all these things. Your only job at that point really is just due diligence on the property and then just keeping an eye on the manager, like managing the manager. That is very different than, let's say you wanna start flipping houses out of state. That is a whole different animal in terms of risk and skills like, um, if I were to rehab something next door to me, I wouldn't be very good at it. Like I, that would be hard enough for me if I could walk to it, much less how to manage that from out of state. And a few years ago, I've probably said this before, uh, I had a tenant in one of my non-turnkey houses actually did a ton of damage by uh, lighting a fire without the flue open. The whole interior of the house had to be redone. And so that was essentially a, I was about to say a full body rehab. I think I just made that up. Um, and I was trying to coordinate that rehab with the current property manager at the time, and it was a total bust. I mean, he basically got out with my money. Nothing got done. The whole thing was terrible. I had to fly to Atlanta, and I spent two weeks managing the contractor. So that experience taught me that if I'm trying to rehab or flip properties or whatever from out of state or even next door to me, that is hard. Um, so I think the answer is I don't think – it's necessarily going to be, let's say if you do buy a turnkey, I don't think that's really any harder than if you were to buy something more local to you. I actually still think it's kind of easier because again, you're not having to figure out the details and the hard stuff. You just have to keep an eye on things. And I tell people at turnkey so far, knock on wood or laminate or something <clears throat> that I've never knock on wood, uh, had a problem that I couldn't fix over the phone. That's right. And this includes firing and hiring property managers. Um, other than that one uh, situation with the non-turnkey house, which could have easily, just as easily happened with the turnkey house, um, shy of that, I've never had to fly in to check, to deal with anything on my properties. I think it's always good to. Um, so obviously if you needed to get to your property, that's going to be a little bit harder, but um I think the answer is that no, it does not have to be more difficult, but it absolutely could be if you choose particular strategies. Um, because if you're going to flip a house next door to you versus flip a house in a few states away, that's that's a big jump in risk and um, I don't even want to say skill level, but yeah, I think in difficulty, difficulty level for sure. Um, John, can I do a 1031... To, oh, let's see. Can I do a 1031, a flip to two turnkey rentals? 
I don't know what the flip part in that sentence means specifically. So let me know if I'm not answering your um, question directly. But if you are trying to 1031, yes, you can absolutely buy uh, turnkeys with that. I know there's some rules about 1031 in terms of the type of property that you're selling it has to match the type that you're buying. So if it's like a single family home, you have to 1031 it into another single family home. And I don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know if that's completely accurate, but there's gotta be, it's like a same, same type of situation. Um, again, if I miss it, if I, if the flip part is specific to something, let me know, but I'm thinking you're just saying uh, flipping the money from a 10 like from one property into two turnkey rentals. Um, and if that's accurate, yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, a lot of the people I work with, they know how to do all that stuff. I'm not quite the specialist in that regard, but um, yeah, Kathy, welcome. Uh, we're about to end, but the replay will be up. I think it posts pretty quick, maybe in the next five, 10 minutes. I think Facebook throws it on there. Um, and if you came in with any questions that, uh, or you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Actually, I don't even know, don't put it in the comments of the Facebook lives. Cause I realized that, um, all of the comments during the live show up on the replay thing. And so I think I may have been missing new questions because I assumed they were all part of the original airing, if that makes any sense. Um, so if, Kathy, if you do have any questions, um, put a post up, let us know, or write them down and come back next Monday. So Crystal, you're very welcome. Um, so I'm going to end. Uh, I have to admit that an hour and six minutes actually flew by way faster than I would have liked. I really digging doing these. So uh, we're going to end for now, but I'll be back next Monday. Um, and that will be right before I'm heading out to Mexico and San Diego. I have a big conference that whole weekend, which I'm super stoked about. Uh, Mexico, I'm going to the dentist. <laughs> and I have some friends down there, so that'll be kind of cool. So I'll be packing and all that, and we'll get a quick Facebook Live in for that. And then, um, yeah, so whatever questions you guys come up with, write them down. Um, keep posting things in the group. What I love when people are posting questions. Um, I love, uh, keep inviting your friends too. Um, I've been so impressed with how many people have been joining the group. It's been really consistent um, with new people. So anyone new who watches this, please reach out. Please don't be shy. Um, I'm here for you guys. And so... I think on that note, um, again, bird plus turnkey stuff coming tomorrow through hipster site. I'll post it. Monique, this has been great. Can't wait for next week. Thank you. Um, thanks. I really appreciate that. And same for Miguel. This was great. Thank you. I, um, I kind of feel almost nerdy saying this, but I really like doing these. Um, and for, let's see, Hipster's been in business now for seven years. And for seven years, people have been trying to get me to do videos. And I just... It's not my thing, but why I think I love these is it's a two-way thing. Like, I love talking to you guys. So, again, for any new people listening, uh, watching, um, please don't be shy because I this is why I'm here, and I want to help you guys out. Uh, El Razon, safe travels in. Looking forward to next Monday. Thank you, David. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, Miguel, eat some tacos in Tijuana. I don't know if I'll eat tacos, but I the food there is just to die for and the margaritas are like I can't even I, for two dollars you get the best margarita of your life um Drew <laughs> I like the the hand thank you guys we'll see you next Monday save up your questions um keep talking on the group invite all your friends and I'll see you then and also one last note we are now putting these videos on YouTube I guess if you're in the group you can still access them but we are putting them on the hipster YouTube channel. So if you ever need a reference or you want to send it to somebody not in the group, um, by next Monday, I'll figure out how to tell you to find them. Cause I don't, I don't know how to find the videos, but they're on YouTube. Um, so talk to you guys soon and see you next Monday.